what inspires me to change people's lives is knowing that what I do every day or what my team does every day truly improves or transforms people's lives. Being a part of our candidates' journey and seeing them having a fulfilling career, having a comfortable, enjoyable, and meaningful life in the U.S. with their family is more than enough to inspire me and my team. Simple thank you notes and hearing their life-changing stories have been very fulfilling and uplifting that pushes us and inspires us to be better on what we do every day. Also, what inspires me to change people's lives is having a team composed of individuals who are highly driven and committed to our mission, vision, and our core values. American Dream is about having better and more opportunities in life, like a fulfilling career and having a comfortable, meaningful, and productive life with you and your family. If you stay focused and inspired, you will eventually achieve your American Dream. This is Health Carousel Philippines. We are Health Carousel Philippines. So without further ado, okay, we would like to start off this session by welcoming, of course, our Senior Manager for Marketing and Recruitment of Health Carousel Philippines, Ms. Marvick Doctor, to give us her opening remarks. Good morning, Ms. Vicky. Good morning, Nico. Good morning, uh, Dr. Ray and all the participants. I'm very excited, Nico, particularly kasi uh, this morning nakita ko yung mga participants natin from all over the Philippines, iba-ibang bansa. So we're really very excited uh, and um, delighted na naka-join sila lahat sa atin today. So yeah, I'd like to welcome everyone. Hello po sa inyong lahat, mga kababayan, dear nurses from all over the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depende yan kung saan kayong sulok ng mundo. Uh, naroroon at this particular moment. So I hope you and your family are safe and well. Kasi napas sa pandemic pa rin tayo, di ba? So uh, we are glad that you joined us today. Welcome to Health Carousel's NCLEX Masterclass event. So this activity forms part of our corporate social responsibility in providing trainings to empower the Filipino nurses like you to be globally competitive. Yan. So passing the NPLEX opens up a life-changing opportunity for nurses like you. So it means that you are a few steps away in realizing your American dream. So whether you are just planning to take the NPLEX or taking the, the test real soon, 
this activity is for you. So our coach for today is Dr. Ray A. Gapos, uh, the academic director and curriculum designer of Ray A. Gapos Review System. So with that said, let us all learn from Coach Ray. Thank you. Over to you, Miko. All right. So thank you very much, Miss Vicky. And I'm sure everyone is already excited and pumped up to start our discussion and our NCLEX Masterclass this morning. So again, without further ado, our resource speaker is co-listed with Bill Gates in the 25th edition of Marquis Who's Who in the World. He is an author for Mosby, Elsevier, and Jones and Bartlett Publishers USA. He has over 25 years of teaching and administrative experience in test preparations, including graduate and undergraduate nursing programs. He was named out he was named one of Go Negotio's first 50 inspiring Filipino entrepreneurs and the Philippine Graphics Magazine's 2006 Young Leaders of the Philippines. He received the MVP Bossing Award for Education, the Agora Award for Entrepreneurship from the Philippine Marketing Association, the SME IT Award from Innovation from the Philippine Internet Commerce Society, the 10 outstanding Filipino entrepreneurs from Entrepreneur Magazine and the Young Market Master for Entrepreneurship from Mansmith and Fielders. He is the first Filipino nurse entrepreneur to be accepted as the member of the prestigious Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Academy. Currently, he serves as a trustee of the Philippine Center for Entrepreneurship or PSE. He finished his Bachelor of Science, of course, in nursing, cum laude, and Master of Arts in nursing, summa cum laude, at the University of Santo Tomas. He was a board top-notcher in the Philippine Nurse Licensure Exam, where he obtained a rating of 89.20%. He obtained his post-baccalaureate certificate in e-learning design and Master of Education in Learning, Design and Technology at the Pennsylvania State University where he finished both courses with a GPA of 4.0. Ladies and Good morning, Dr. Ray. Good morning, Miko. Good morning to all our colleagues out there and to my fellow nurses especially from the different parts of the world. But my heart is really pretty close to those who are in the provinces. Mga nasa Cebu, mga nasa Ilocos region. Ako ay GI, I'm a genuine Ilocano. Na imbag nga bigat yung amin dita, Apo. Lalo na yung mga nasa iba't ibang panig ng mundo. It's my pleasure to be of service to you guys through this um, activity that was conceived out of the concern of health carousel for, to assist all of you guys to achieve your great American dream. I was once like you too several years ago. Don't ask my age now. I've been a test preparations coach for the 27th year from being my working student days to this. And this industry has been so um a blessing really for me. It has been so good to me so that at this point in time in my career, the only thing I want to do is to assist you guys to transform your great American dream to reality. And thank you, Health Carousel, for giving us this platform, the opportunity to reach out to my colleagues, especially those who are dreaming to one day have that USRN after their names. Those are the four most coveted letters after a nurse's name, of course, even without all of those uh, letters that like, that's like M-A-N, M-E-N, okay, whatever, A-B-S, A-B-N, R-P-N, what matters the most is that you get these four letters after engaging in our masterclass today. So thank you very much, Ma'am Vicky. Thank you very much, Sir Miko. Thank you very much, Ma'am Connie and Sir Kenji, the new president of Health Carousel. Congratulations for coming up with this event. 
So at this point in time, I would not let you wait for long. I'd like to share with you some of the things which I know would be very, very essential for you to know as you prepare for the NCLEX RN test, okay? So from being your mentor, I'm Ray Gapus. I'm known as your fact check buddy. Make sure that you read the check mark in between those two words, okay? It doesn't sound right without the check mark. So this Ray Gapus, your fact check buddy. Okay, so at this point in time, let's get inspired. Everything begins through an inspiration. You know, when I started my own business more than 25 years ago, I only had three students who listened to me. Apathetic pa po yung dalawa. So whenever I crack a joke, isa na lang po yung tumatawa with me. At pag nawala pa yung isa, ako na lang po ang tumatawa sa sarili ko. So what is important is that you are inspired with what you are about to do. So let's begin with a feedback from one of my participants in, in one of my classes that I do online. So here's a great feedback. And let's read through it. There's a Ray, thank you. And thank you for sharing this to us. The review last night was phenomenal, very encouraging. I'm so glad I was part of it. You're a heaven sent. Once again, thank you very much. And may almighty God continue to bless you. Good health and long life. So you will forever help and support people around the globe with your knowledge, power, and perseverance. You're one of the best mentors, Mentor Ray. Mildred from Alabama. That was an immediate feedback after she we finished engaging in a teaching and learning session on the NCLEX RN. However, after several days, she gave me an email. She sent me an email, and this is what she says. Hi, Mentor Ray. Thank you for your effort of helping us. I'm happy to say I passed the NCLEX. One week before the exam, I attended your quick fix one. Thank you, and thank you again. To God be the glory. And you have here Mildred Green, USRN. Alabama, USA. How is that for a feedback coming from somebody who, whom I even have not met personally? And yet, she is acknowledging that we were able to help her. So thank you very much. May um, the same things that happened to Mildred also happen to all of you guys as you prepare for your NCLEX RN test. So here's also an advice coming from one of our students or participant in a previous NCLEX RN masterclass I did, it's entitled Quick Fix. Okay, coming from Michelle, guys, please watch po yung mga quick fix ni Sir Gapus kasi kung nakinig ka talaga doon, hindi ka maguguluhan. Tapos pati lectures niya ng ECG and insulins. Plus the ABC and 311, we're giving that away. We're giving copies of those books today. The secret of passing is simple. Just listen to Sir Gapus and all his lectures. Good luck po sa mga susunod. Kaya nyo po yan. Dasal lang at tiwala. Let's translate that to English. To our international participants, guys, please watch the quick fix sessions of Sir Gapus because if you listen to him, you won't get lost. Then also watch his lectures on ECG and insulins plus the ABC and 311. The secret of passing is simple. Just listen to Sir Gapus and all his lectures. Good luck to the next takers. You can do it. Just pray and continue continue to trust. So that's coming from a participant of a master class I did. And here she is. That's Michelle Domingo from Northwestern University, who's now a USRN from the State Board of New York. And she's saying, thank you for doing the quick fix. It was a great help when I took my exam last October 23. You're a blessing, sir. May you continue to be a blessing to thousands of aspirants out there. Let me tell you guys, the quick fix session is being done monthly and it's for free. Usually the session lasts approximately three to five hours. And if you cannot watch it live through our live stream, you could actually catch up with us through our YouTube channel. And then if you have a very, very limited um, attention span or free time, you could actually watch our chopped video that are videos that are more chewable than the longer videos that we have. We also have those videos in our YouTube channel. So here's my question. Why are we here today? What are we here for today? Why are we here today? So what's the basic reason why all of us are supposed to be tuning in to this health carousel masterclass for the NCLEX RN? Guys, it's not about me. It's about you. We want you through health carousel to get a glimpse of what does it take to realize your great American dream, especially now that we're one of the professionals who are really well paid in the States and there are now 
uh, instances in the US where even just merely new grads, those who have yet to take the NCLEX are being hired by hospitals and they're paid $40 an hour. So that gives you a glimpse of what opportunity is in store for you if you begin working on that NCLEX RN test now as we engage in this teaching and learning activity designed for all of you. So the first question that we have to ask ourselves is, how is the NCLEX RN different from other tests? Maybe I have had the opportunity to have taken all those tests from nurse licensure exam to HAAD RN to Prometrics. I took them all. And I took the NCLEX four different states in the US, passed them all, even took it in one Asian country and pass it to. So the most important thing that I'd like to share with you guys is how are we going to differentiate the test from the other test? Because if you know the difference, that forms the basis or the core of our preparations. You might be uh, so inclined about memorizing facts, but the NCLEX is not about memorizing facts. So stop memorizing your facts. So it's not about fact memorizing. Okay, <laughs> so it's not about fact memorizing. So it's about reflecting on those facts and applying them to manage common concerns of clients. Albeit, those clients are just simulations that are presented in cases that are transformed into questions on the actual test. Okay, so. Let me give you a bird's eye view of how NCLEX is different from other tests by giving you a sample question. So here we go. The nurse has consulted the social worker regarding the following clients. Which client should the nurse recommend the social worker to evaluate first? One, 45-year-old man who's homeless, newly diagnosed with diabetes. Two, 68-year-old man with heart failure, no insurance coverage. Three, 51-year-old woman with a history of recent myocardial infarctions, getting a divorce. And four, 65-year-old woman who had cerebrovascular accident and has been living alone at home. What is difficult with this question is the fact that it's not just asking you about nursing per se, but it's asking you about your role in a multidisciplinary environment that includes other healthcare professionals like the social worker. Therefore, what is difficult here is that what will you need to look for? Are you going to base your answer on the age of the client? Are you going to base your answer on the situations where the clients are in? So what do we need to do? That's when our method comes in. My method is called the functional concepts method that's unique to the Ray Gapu system. It took me like three years to do all of this when I studied in the States. And based on my method, you have to have a series of functional concepts to arrive at that answer. And the first functional concept that we need to use okay, is actually this one. Social workers are the dominant professionals in supportive housing. What does that tell us? Let's reflect on that specific sentence. What is it telling us? So it's telling us that when we have a patient na ang problema ay tungkol sa bahay, so that's the priority of the social worker. Therefore, the priority client for evaluation of the social worker would be the homeless client. Bingo! That's the thing that you have to look for in each of the options. Look for the keyword homeless. And then, makukuha mo na ang tamang sagot. Let's go back to the question once again. So the nurse has consulted the social worker regarding the following clients. Which client should the nurse recommend the social worker to evaluate first? Okay, the first one, 45-year-old man who is homeless, newly diagnosed with diabetes. Even if you have the keyword already here, we still need to go through the other options because not unless we're able to go through it all, would we be able to identify the correct or the best answer. Next, 68 year old man with heart failure, no insurance coverage, not homeless. 51 year old woman with history of recent myocardial infarction is getting a divorce, not homeless. 65 year old woman with severe vascular accident and has been living alone at home, not homeless. So the keyword, our functional concept, when we talk about the priority of the social worker for evaluation, let's talk about the homeless client. And so therefore the correct answer S number one. What I would want to tell you here, guys, is ang NCLEX madali pag alam mo ano ang titignan mo. 
So the n clicks is easy if you know what you need to look for. And sometimes, ang problema natin na overwhelmed tayo sa dami ng data in a question. Maybe because that's caused by our own strategy when we're studying. Paano ba tayo mag-aral? Okay, makakita tayo ng magandang handout. We ask our friend, pa-email mo sa akin, pa-send naman sa, sa messenger ko. Pengin ng PDF file, pengin ng JPEG file. Tapos pag naipon nyo lahat yung mga file, bigla mo sasabihin sa sarili mo, wow, ang gaganda ng notes ko, ang dami, tapos tulog na ako. You see, you're not giving it adequate time. As they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. So you have to invest time in developing your proficiency on how to use functional concepts so that you could get through your test, okay, and pass it with flying colors. So therefore, at this point in time, I'd like to highlight the changes on the NCLEX RN. Marami kasing tanong dyan eh. Sir, may mga bago na bang tanong? Ang sagot dyan, in general, meron. I'll show you the specific changes. Sir, may mga bago bang policies? In general, meron. I'll answer some questions related to that later on. Sir, may mga kailangan ba kaming malaman na hindi pa namin alam? I'm not sure of that, but definitely, let's get down to details. Here are the NCLEX RN changes both on the procedures of test taking and on the test content itself. Okay, so the first question. In addition to my passport, what should I bring on my test day? At this time of the pandemic, and they have been requiring this since October 1 of 2020, you need to bring your own mask, okay? So bring your own mask, okay? There's a question. Yung passport ko po kasi na expire, okay? Paano po yun? Eh, ang haba ng pila, hindi ko po marinyo. Definitely, take note, your person view prefers they have a preference that the ID that you will use would be your passport. Paano nga ko na-expire? Okay, hindi na po ba ako pwede makapag-take ng exam? If you were born several years back, that would be the case. But during the time of the pandemic, they're giving you considerations. This one, good news. Okay, for as long as you're meeting the other criteria for your ID, it bears your name, your complete details, it's government issued, you will be allowed to use that ID. Ah, okay. So, hindi mo lang na-renew yung passport mo. Nag-expire, pero government issued siya. It has your details. It has your picture. You can use it. Question. Paano pag ni-renew mo, hindi mo pa na-retrieve kagad, natenga sa DFA, then that's a problem because the passport is the most preferred identification card. Some of us, medyo matigas ang ulo, Okay, nakalagay kasi sa NCLEX, any government issued ID, sasabihin na isa, i-renew ko muna yung passport ko. Anyway, meron akong driver's license. The um, testing center, person view, prefers to have your passport as your primary identification document. So kung ako ikaw, don't let go of your passport yet. Hindi mo na renew they're giving considerations. Okay? So I hope that clears the situation for you guys. Yung mga kinakabahan kasi nagre ng passport at natenggang passport. Okay, you can uh, breathe a sigh of relief now. Okay, next. Is English proficiency a must to pass the NCLEX? Sabi kasi ng iba, hindi ako marunong mag-English. Hindi ako pumabasa. <laughs> Sabi ng iba, malalalim ang mga vocabulary. Okay? Ang vocabulary ko mababaw lang. E sa NCLEX, kailangan daw vocabulary abot hanggang cervix. May ganun baka lalim. Okay. So anyway, I will not answer this question myself because it's just going to be a matter of my opinion. What I would want to show you is actually one of the messages I received from people around the world whom I have mentored. There are thousands of them. Name it from all the continents in the world, they've been to my class. I've never met them, but they've been giving me very, very good feedback, including this one. Okay, so here's one of our thousands of NCLEX RN passers around the world, okay? Salim DeAndre. Salim actually just passed the test last December. Look, Hello, my online mentor. I was watch you video every time seven months. I take exam December 2 and after seven try, I finally pass exam. I 48 years old now and I finally achieved my dream. I thank you so much, mentor. You a big help to me passing. I love all you videos, special the quick fix. 
Thank you so much, my mentor. I am so happy I found you channel. Thank you. I proud say I am Celine Deandre USR. And I'm having goosebumps, even if I've already read this a couple of times. But it's because look how a good thing results to a snowball of a lot of good things happening around the world. During the pandemic, if there's one good thing that came out of it, I was able to reflect on myself and ask myself, what God-given talent can I share to the people around the world so that at least I can address some of their needs? And at this point in time, thank you for Health Carousel for giving me the platform to share my God-given knowledge to all our colleagues out there who need an assistance, like Selim Deondre. So we go back to our question. Is English proficiency a must to pass the NCLEX? Look, Selim barely speaks English that well, but he was so persistent to achieve his dream. And on his seventh try, he spent seven months attending my quick fix classes for free on YouTube. And he finally passed. How many Salem DeAndre do we have out there? It doesn't matter. What matters is you always believe that you can turn your great American dreams to reality one day. And I'm just here, your mentor Ray, your fact check buddy, to assist you. Okay? That's going to be for free, of course. Next question. How many items will I have to answer? Okay. Let me clarify about this. We have to know how many items will be scored. Bakit, sir? Kasi sa NCLEX ngayon, may two parts tayo. Meron tayong tinatawag na pre-test at meron tayong tinatawag na scored test. The pre-test items will be 15 items. They are not scored. Ah, so kung mahirap yung pre-test, don't get discouraged. It will not affect your pass or fail status eventually. Okay? So, out of the 75 items na binibigay, 15 items will be pre-test. 60 items will be your scored test. So therefore, the minimum number of scored items will be 60. So pwede ka bang mag-shut down uh, with the minimum number of items? Of course. So I shut down the NCLEX at 75 items or 60 scored items. Pwede yun. Pero hindi totoo yung nagsasabi na na-shut down niya NCLEX at 50. Baka nag-brown out kaya nag-shut down. <laughs> Once again, colleagues, the minimum number of scored items will be 60. Okay? And you have a pretest consisting of 15 items. So therefore, if you total that, the minimum would be 75. But only 60 will be scored. Okay? I hope I was able to clarify that. Then here's another question that we have. Will I have a pretest? Will my score in the pretest be part of my final score? This is what I'd like to tell you guys. Your performance in the pretest will not affect your final score. Ang tanong, eh bakit pa sila nagbibigay ng pretest? Hindi din naman pala counted. Kasi yung mga pretest items, yun yung mga vina-validate, tinitignan nila kung masasagutan ba ng nurses o masyado bang mahirap para in the future, it will form a part of these scored items. Ah, so yung mga pretests that are being given today will be the items of the NCLEX in the future if they are found to be reliable and valid. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. What is the minimum and the maximum scored items in the test? We've answered the minimum. It's going to be 60 and scored. Maximum item na scored ay 130. So 130 plus yung 15 na pretest mo, ang total ay 145 items na lang. In the past, ang minimum ay 75, ang maximum ay 265, okay? Now the good thing, you know, with NCLEX is that I was part of it as it developed. Naabutan ko na ang NCLEX ay paper-based. Naabutan ko, I took an, the NCLEX test nung bago pa lang siyang computer adaptive. Nag-take uli ako nung inintroduce ang innovative and alternate items. And nag-take uli ako sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo just to validate uh, the, the, the myth or, or the, the idea that the NCLEX would usually give different uh, levels of difficulty in different parts of the world. So if there's one person who can claim to be 
na breakfast, lunch at dinner and clex ang kinakain ko. Pati snack na siguro ako yon. I've been a test preparations coach for more than 25 years and this has been my passion. Okay, so let's move on. Will the pass or fail decision still based, be based on my performance in the last 60 items? Bakit tinanong ito? Okay, because colleagues, listen up, listen up. In the past, in the past, if you, even if you answered all 265 items, the pass or fail decision would be based on your performance in the last 60 items. Noong uh, nakaraang panahon yon. Bakit ganun, sir? Kaya nga maraming bumabagsak noon kasi pag nagra out of time na sila, ang ginagawa nila, binibilisan nila. Kasi ang ginagawa nilang goal to answer all 265 items. That's not the goal of the NCLEX passer would be. The goal should be to be able to come up with the correct answer with every single question that pops out of your computer screen. So, ibig sabihin, dapat ang goal mo, bawat tanong masagot mo ng tama. That's in the past. Kasi nga, ang pass or fail ay base lang dun sa last 60 items mo lagi. So, pag 120 items ang sinagutan mo, dun sa 61 to 120 sila magbibase. Sir, paano yung sinagot ko dun sa 1 to 60? Wala na yon. Okay, that's in the past. I repeat, that's in the past. Doon sa bagong pamantayan ng NCLEX, ito ang maganda. The pass or fail decision will take into consideration all your answers in the items. Yay! Okay. So in essence, yung sinagutan mo from question number one up to question, for example, inabot ka ng 145, up to question 145, all your correct answer counts. Uh, unlike in the past, na yung last 60 items lang yung consider. Okay, so that's quite an improvement and it's a good news for all of us actually because sometimes our attention fluctuates when we're taking the test and that's the reason why I recommend a food supplement. Kindly send me a message through the chat box because this has been the food supplement. I have been, it's FDA approved, I have been sharing with my students and sometimes I'm giving it to them for free. Uh, sa office ko kasi nakakatulong talaga siya para hindi mag-fluctuate yung attention nung, nung studyante while taking the test. Okay? Remember, ang pagpasa ng NCLEX, para ka rin nag-work out sa gym. Sa gym, kahit na anong repetition mo ng pag-lift mo ng dumbbells or weights, hindi lalaki ang muscle because, because wala kang supplement. So, ganun din sa pag-take ng NCLEX. Kailangan may supplement. At ano yun? It's FDA approved. It's available on the internet. I'm just sharing the information because I discovered it myself because I used it too. Okay? Okay. So next, meron tayong tanong dito. How much time will I be given to finish my test? In the new NCLEX, new normal way, you're given five hours. Question. Kasama na po ba dun, sir, sa five hours yung NCLEX tutorial? This is the good news that they have now. You can access the NCLEX tutorial at home even before you take your test. And the NCLEX tutorial part of the NCLEX has been um, replaced with test taking tips and strategy session on your actual test date, okay? Okay, so next question. Will my test time include the NCLEX tutorial? We've just answered that, no. So the five hours is just plainly for your test taking. The tutorials, you can take it at home before taking the test. So this is now the new NCLEX tutorial portion. Uh, you have NCLEX candidate tutorial in English and you have it in French. If you're taking the NCLEX and you're fluent in French, they're offering this specially for candidates in North America. Okay. Pwede kayo magkaroon ng NCLEX in Tagalog. <laughs> One day, tapos may Ilocano. Ako nakakatawa siguro magbasa. Okay, now, here's another question. Is the rule on run out of time still applicable? Wow, I want to run to you. Okay, run out of time. Ito yung natataranta yung ating mga colleagues before. Kasi pag nagra-run out of time na sila, ginagawa binibilisan, the more na bumabagsak. Kasi in the past, yung pass or fail position nga, doon binibase sa last 60 items performance. Now, this is a good news for all of you guys. The run out of time rule no longer applies. Kasi nga, ang konti na nasasagutan mo, di ba? Total of 145 items kasama ang 15 item pre-test. So ang score lang doon, 130, eh may limang oras ka. Now, the question is, Sir, ano marirecommend mong strategy? Will I go fast or will I go slow? Okay? 
I always tell my students when you're taking the NCLEX, take it like a turtle. Ah, okay. So what's the pace? Most of my, my foreign students on the test would usually try to analyze and to construct a question for 10 to 15 minutes each. So kahit maubos mo yung three hours na 60 items lang ang sinagutan mo or 75 items lang ang sinagutan mo, kung pasado ka naman, it doesn't matter. So remember, hindi pabilisan ang NCLEX. Okay? Hindi siya pabilisan. Okay, let's move on. Here's another question. Ito ang gustong-gusto kong tanong na sagutin. Are there questions on the concepts of research? Ito na ang debate. May mga na test taker kasi na hindi nila naintindihan ano ba ang NCLEX. Then they give out wrong information. Tuloy, itong mga nag-pre-prepare ng NCLEX naman, ang ginagawa, nagme-memorize ng sampling, snowball sampling, random sampling, systematic sampling, nag-aaral ng methods of research, ng statistical methods, t-test, chi-square, kung ano-ano. Let me say it categorically. Walang question on the concept of research. Stop studying it. Okay? <laughs> Medyo stern and firm ako pagdating dyan, di ba? Kasi natutorete na ako sa mga sinasabi. Sir, may research daw wala. Ang meron sa NCLEX ay ito. The Voluntary NCLEX Generation and Next Generation NCLEX Special Research Section has been reintroduced. Hindi ibig sabihin na tatanungin ka tungkol sa research. Ang sinasabi nitong section na to ay yung mga katanungan within the research section will form the basis of the next generation NCLEX, which I'm going to show you in a while. So stop studying about research. This is just misunderstood by those who took the test. And then they begin telling everybody na may research daw. And look, this is even just voluntary. So yung question sa research section, ibig sabihin lahat ng question doon ay hindi pa kasama sa NCLEX. It's still undergoing validity and reliability test. Kaya nga tinawag na research section. Okay? It will form the questions of the NCLEX in the future. This is voluntary. You may not want to take it. So kung ako ikaw, bakit ko pa i-stressin yung sarili ko? Nasagutan ito. Okay? So you can even not answer it. So stop studying about research. It's not going to be asked on the test. What matters the most is, okay, importante lang ang focus mo. Okay, so may nagtanong, okay ba uminom ng jingo biloba? Of course, just make sure that you're taking the jingo biloba na hindi wheat grass. Kasi may mga nagtitinda ng jingo biloba na wheat grass naman yung laman. Okay, so once again, walang question on research process. Ang meron sa NCLEX would be voluntary research section. If you volunteer to be a subject of the research they're doing, then answer the section. That's the essence of that part of the test. So knowing that this is voluntary, so sabihin mo sa nagsasabi, sabihin mo may research na, sabihin mo voluntary yon. Pwede mong hindi sagutan. Okay? Para hindi kayo nag-aaral ng extra concept na sa totoo lang, wala naman sa exam. Tinakot lang natin ang ating mga sarili. Okay? At yung mga profit of doom na mga nagsasabi ng may research question sa NCLEX, please, huwag nang mag-spread ng fake news. Intindihin natin kung ano yung sinasabi ng exam. Okay? So let's move on. Here is the sample that I prepared. Okay? It's a series of questions that shows you what the next generation NCLEX RN is all about. So this part of the NCLEX, once again, I'd like to reiterate, I'd like to repeat, this is voluntary. So which means, itong section na ito, pag lumabas sa'yo, pwedeng hindi mo sagutan. It will not affect your pass or fail results. Okay? So let's get through it. Okay. So here's an example. On the next generation of NCLEX, malayo pa siguro yan, di ba? They're gonna have case studies, okay? Walang nakakatakot na item on the NCLEX if you are prepared, okay? Question lang yan eh. All you have to do is to answer it properly and you have to have your own method of doing so, okay? So the first one, here's an example of a case study question in an NCLEX style format. So you have here the stem of the question. You have a 35-year-old patient is in the emergency unit due to a motor vehicle accident. And then you have an entry 
that's labeled as nurse's notes. And you have here a description of what happened to the client. So the client is conscious, cooperative, and is able to swallow. The client is manifesting irregular heart rhythm, tingling sensation around the mouth, sweating, and irritability. Oh, parang ikaw yun na. <laughs> <laughs> tingling sensation around the mouth. History reveals several episodes of dizziness in the past few days that led to falls and injuries. Blood sugar assessment was ordered. Blood sugar is at 40 milligrams per deciliter. Here, to be able to answer this question properly, you have to recall your normal values. If you know that the blood normal blood sugar level could be arranged from 70 to 110 milligrams per deciliter, that would help you to identify the problem. So 40 categorically is below 50, and 50 is already considered as a hypoglycemic state. Therefore, the signs and symptoms of the patient could be associated with a hypoglycemic state. Let's read further. The patient was given 30 grams of carbohydrates per RM. Provider was notified for appropriate glucose management. Patient's treatment regimen is being evaluated by the provider. A repeat blood glucose assessment is ordered every 15 minutes until blood glucose levels are above 80 milligrams per deciliter. That's the goal for the blood glucose levels to be at least 80 milligrams per deciliter. So what inference can we come up with? What would be our hypothesis that we can test? Okay, the fact that the client had motor vehicular accident, don't immediately recall about motor vehicular accident. Try to figure things out what could have caused it. The fact that the patient's blood sugar level is low and the fact that the patient is having tingling sensation around the mouth, it could mean that the patient while driving could be having hypoglycemia. You have to create the storyline for this type of questions. Kaya nga sa case study, wag mong itrato na question yung case study. Itrato mo siyang kwento para mas madgaan ang dating sa'yo. You ask yourself, what is the story all about? Para hindi ka napipressure, <coughs> excuse me, to give a correct answer. Ang importante, alam mo, ano yung kwento? Kwento na disgrasya yung pasyente. Bakit na disgrasya? Gamitin natin yung pagkachismoso-chismoso natin bilang Pilipino as a test-taking strategy. Kasi bumaba ang sugar. O di ba pag bumaba ang sugar, nagkakaroon ka ng dizziness. Kaya siguro siya, ayan, nag-dizziness. Kaya siguro siya na disgrasya. That's a very good hypothesis that we can test. Okay, now. How to deal with the question? Use the FIPA strategy. Pag sinabi natin FIPA strategy, identify the facts, make an inference, plan, and then identify your priority action. So what did we have from the case study? Motor vehicle accident, history of falls, irregular heartbeat, tingling sensation around the mouth, blood glucose below 40. So what's our inference? What's the initial hypothesis that we came up with? Siguro the patient is having hypoglycemia. Yes, that is supported by the low blood sugar level. Therefore, what is our plan? Reverse hypoglycemia. So what would be our priority intervention? Immediately administer glucose supplements. So with this method, alam mo na kung paano sagutin ang tanong. Hindi nakakatakot ang tanong kung alam mo mag-prepare for your exam. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. So another type of the next generation NCLEX is what is known as your enhanced hotspot. So with the enhanced hotspot, okay, you are given, once again, your nurse's notes, and then here's the direction. Click on the findings that would require follow-up. Anong mahirap with enhanced hotspot? Tinat, sinasabihan ka niya na i-click mo yung mga findings, assessment, na kailangan mong i-follow up yan ang mahirap. You are being asked here to cluster your data, which data are significant, which data are insignificant. You just need to highlight the significant data. Kaya ang i-highlight lang natin yan. Irregular heart rhythm, tingling sensation around the mouth, sweating, irritability, dizziness, falls and injuries, and blood glucose. That would give you the data that you need to come up with an inference and a hypothesis that you can test with your intervention. So in essence, pag alam mo na kung ano yung in-enhance mo, di meron ka ng points dito. Ang tanong, Sir, paano pag hindi lahat yan na-click ko? E di mali ka. <laughs> Ah, kailangan all or none yan. I-click mo lahat yung hinihingi niyang sagot. Ito nga mahirap dito sa enhanced uh, highlighting eh, na method ng testing. Bakit? Hindi niya sinasabi kung ilan ba dapat yung items or yung words na iha-highlight mo. Ah, ang sabi lang niya, ang kanyang instruction ay click on the words that would require or quick click on the findings that would require follow-up. Ikaw ang mag-determine based on what is given. See, the NCLEX is going to become difficult if you, don't, if you don't work on it now. 
Stop procrastinating. Work on your dreams now. Health Carousel is with you guys. So work on your dreams now. Let's move on. So once again, dun sa enhanced hotspot type of test, use the FIPA strategy. Identify the facts, infer, plan, and identify your action. Okay? Now, on the next generation NCLEX, you will also meet close test. Ano ibig sabihin ng closed test? A closed test or closed deletion test consists of a portion of language with certain items, words, or signs removed. In essence, kailangan alam mo na rin ang rules on grammar, word choice. Ah, yung next generation NCLEX, in-integrate na nila yung IELTS. Na noong unang panahon, nung time namin sa CGFNS, naka-integrate naman talaga ang English noon. That's why nung unang panahon, in the 90s, when I initially took the test, hindi kami nire-require na mag-TOEFL or mag-IELTS. Nung unang panahon, dalawang section yung test. Isang nursing section, isang English section. Pag pinasama pareho, you get a certificate. And that's all there is to it. Ngayon na lang dumami ng sumobrang nanganak yung requirements. Now, with the next generation NCLEX, babalik yung knowledge level na kailangan nilang itest in terms of your ability okay, to identify correct word choices. So you have to know your rules on grammar. So let's move on. So here's a sample question on that. Complete the following sentences by choosing from the list of options. So the nurse should recognize that the patient's Glucose level is, nakita natin kanina, 40 milligrams yon. So, do we consider that low, decrease, or false? <laughs> Alam nga naman sabihin natin, the nurse should recognize that the patient's glucose level is false. <laughs> Mali. <laughs> or is decrease. Dapat may di yon. So, you see, the next generation NCLEX will integrate rules on grammar. And the correct choice would be definitely low. And then you move on to the next uh, set of... Um, Fill in the blanks items. With this condition, the patient's level of consciousness may blank and the patient may develop blank. So, hahanapin mo ulit dito. So, the patient's level of consciousness may decrease. is a possible answer. Yes. And the patient may develop. Ano may develop niya? Is it injuries, seizures, or death? So, baka pwede mong sabihin, and the patient may develop death. <laughs> Again, is that grammatically correct? Or baka naman sabihin mo, and the patient may develop normal. <laughs> So you really have to focus on the rules on grammar. So the right answers would be the level of consciousness may decrease and the patient may develop, okay, seizures. Okay. So hindi kasi pwedeng patient's level of consciousness may decrease and the patient may develop increased energy. Hindi sila tugma. Diba? The rules on parallelism, okay, and correct choice of words, okay, should apply. Okay, so that's what is important. Kaya nga pinagpala tayo if you can take the NCLEX as early as you can do it now. Okay, okay. So the most important thing is you have to focus on your abilities and enhance them. Next, the most severe outcome of this condition is, the keyword is there, most severe. In Tagalog, pinakamalala. Ano pa ba ang pinakamalala kundi ang kamatayan? So anong pwede mong isagot dito? Death. So with that, kailangan mong makuha lahat ito ng tama to get a point. That's how the test would be a little more difficult in the future. So I'm telling you now, I'm giving you my very, very sound advice. Take it the soonest you can. And Health Carousel is there to help you out. And I'm so glad they've given me this platform to share with you yung kaunti natin kaalaman na nag-gain natin in more than 25 years of me conducting NCLEX RN classes from practically all parts of the continents around the world. I have had the opportunity to teach Chinese people. I've had the opportunity to teach Indians and so on and so forth. And isa lang ang masasabi ko. Tayong mga Pilipino, nandudun tayo sa pinakamagagaling, pero kailangan pa rin natin mabigyan ng sense of direction. Okay? Kahit tayo ay isa sa pinakamagagaling at pinakamababango for that matter, kailangan pa rin tayo may sense of direction. That's the reason why we're here. And thank you, Health Carousel, for giving us this platform once again as part of your corporate social responsibility. My hats off to all of you guys. Maraming salamat for this. Okay? So let's move on. So 
those of you who may want more of these examples, you could actually log onto my channel, Gapos Mentors YouTube channel, and let's go through some comments coming from my international students. Christy Wombo, I'm glad I found your videos because they were very precise on the things that I need to know to pass the NCLEX with easy understanding. I enjoy reading your book, The ABC. Okay, a great way to wrap up all the things we learned. Thank you, Dr. Gapos. Thanks very much for your help. Very helpful. I have great respect for your books, ABC and flashcards. Thank you. Okay, K. Rodriguez is really thankful that I found Gapos uploaded videos are really helpful. Please keep on posting videos about NCLEX. We're doing that. We're posting videos twice or thrice a week. So please do check it out. Our collection of videos, more than close to 200 videos now. Stay safe and God bless. So maraming salamat. And I'm doing a, an NCLEX quick fix again on March 6th. That's going to be 9 a.m. That's for free. You could actually log on to that for free through our YouTube channel. So eto na ang tanong. So, sir, ano ang aaralin ko? I'm taking the NCLEX next month. What should I study? Kaya tayo nandito because I'm giving you a sense of direction. And the good thing about this is that you're getting it for, for free from all of us here. And it's coming from a person whose heart is really into assisting nurses to turn their great American dreams to reality. Kasi I was once a dreamer like you. At sabi ko nga itong industriya nito ay naging napakabait sa akin. And that's the reason why my way of giving back is assisting you all. Yun lang yung advocacy ko. Okay? Okay. Eto na po tayo ngayon. So, meron tayong mga quick fix session on my YouTube channel. You can join me live or delayed telecast on March 6th. That's 9 a.m. So, you would notice that on my quick fix session, it covers the concepts on prioritizing, delegation, all of those things that you need to remember for your test, and you could get it for free. At ang maganda sa quick fix session, you can request for the PDF copy of the slides. Hindi po ako madamot. Ang knowledge po ay para sa lahat. So if you want a copy of the slides of my presentation, sure, you just send us an email. There's the email that you can send uh, your request directly through me. I am the one answering that email. So you, if you want to get a copy in PDF file, sure. Mm -mm. Okay? So let's move on. Supportan natin ang bawat isa. Sino pa ba magtutulungan kundi tayong mga kapwa Filipinos? Okay? So let's move on. Now, what are the top 10 concepts that I recommend that you should focus on when you're taking the NCLEX RN? within the month or next month. So that's the first quarter of the year. I usually change my advice every month on what you need to focus on. So let's move on. Concept number 10, infection control. So pag pinag-usapan natin ang infection control, let's take a look at a sample question. This is the best way to get an idea. Ano ba tinatanong dyan? Which of the following conditions require the implementation of standard precautions only? Okay. Ano mahirap dito? Ano napansin natin? What did you say? You have the word conditions instead of diseases. Why? Because on the NCLEX, we have what they call syndromic approach to question analysis. You are just given a group of symptoms. The disease is not being labeled. Or you're just given a risk factor. The disease is not being named. Okay? Let's get through all the options. One, diarrhea that developed after intake of medium rare meat. Mouth foaming and seizures after a raccoon bite. Three, drooping of the eyelids after intake of honey. Four, fever, rushes, and complex spots. Five, late afternoon low grade fever, weight loss, and blood sputum. Pag nakita mo to, magbibigay ka naman ng golum look. <laughs> so Lord of the Ring. Ko kaya, bigla mo sasabihin, ang alam ko lang dyan yung may complex spot, right? I only know one thing, the one with the complex spot. So what we need to do is to come up with a guide. And this is where our method, it's called functional concepts method. It's handy. It comes in when you need it the most. So remember, standard precautions are implemented for the following conditions. And the code is BRATS. Okay. And BRATS stand for botulism. Your botulism, the signs and symptoms would be similar to that of your myasthenia gravis. You have drooping of the eyelids, difficult to swallowing, difficult to speaking. Okay drooling sometimes could happen. And this occurs after intake of food like honey, especially if you have a child less than 12 months of age. That's why a functional concept could be you don't serve honey to children less than 12 months of age because of the increased risk for botulism. So I just would like to clarify the misconception that botulism is not common. <laughs> 
<laughs> among a, a part of the population. Iba tuloy yung naiisip ko pag naging botulism. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's move on. R would be for rabies. Now, you don't see rabies as a label on the actual test. So the common manifestation of rabies would be mouth foaming, and then you have seizures, and then the patient will have fever, and then they have muscle rigidity. And this usually comes after being bitten by animals like dogs, cats, raccoon, and even your cattle. Okay? Sabi ng isang estudyante, sir, ano yung cattle? Yung cattle doon nakatira yung ari, Reina. <laughs> Okay, of course, that's just a joke. Okay, I know you're, some of you are getting anxious about preparing for the NCLEX. Let's make fun of ourselves once in a while. Okay, and then A would be for AIDS. You would know that when a patient would have Kaposi's sarcoma or opportunistic infections. And then amebiasis is actually a type of diarrheal infection that's characterized by watery diarrhea, abdominal cramps, and fever. And anthrax could have uh, could present itself in four different forms. You have cutaneous anthrax where you have blister and rushes, which is darkened at the center. The patient could also have inhalant anthrax that could result to pulmonary signs and symptoms leading to respiratory distress. You could have gastrointestinal anthrax manifested by uh, lymphadenopathy as well as GI manifestations like nausea, vomiting, okay? And then of course, you have your injection anthrax, which is almost similar to the cutaneous anthrax. So what you need to remember would be that anthrax is considered as a terrorism for, uh, sorry, as an agent for bioterrorism. So it's a bioterrorism agent category A. So whenever you prioritize clients, a client with anthrax belonging to category A priority would mean that the patient with anthrax should be your highest priority one of your highest priorities, okay? Let's move on. T would be toxoplasmosis. Now, you would know that a patient would have toxoplasmosis if they've eaten um, undercooked meat, they've been exposed to cut litter box, and they develop gastrointestinal manifestations like diarrhea. And this is very crucial if your patient is pregnant because um, the toxoplasma gondii could be transmitted in utero to the fetus, and that could lead to birth defects, okay? Toxic shock syndrome could be a result of the use of contraceptive devices like diaphragm or tampons. That's the reason why low absorbent tampon is preferred because it forces the user to change the tampons every four to eight hours. Because the longer that the tampon stays in there, it breeds bacteria, okay? So the most important thing that you have to remember when you see a patient with toxic shock syndrome is ask whether they're using diaphragm for contraceptives or they're using tampons. Always remember your toxic shock syndrome is associated with this gadgets or equipment that they usually insert in their vaginal canal. So this could also be associated with um, the use of your sanitary napkins. It's a good thing that you don't have menstruation for males, okay? Or should we consider ours also a menstruation, but it's not expected, but it is something that could be predicted? I don't know, <laughs> okay? So remember, <laughs> several years ago, there was this sanitary pad that they say, uh, it's the best choice of ladies, okay? Because it's the only sanitary pad with wings. But after several years, can no longer be found. Why? They didn't make a lot of money. It's because they failed to realize that women don't just like the wings. They want the entire bird. Okay. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> Sabi nga nung iba. Okay. We're all adults here. Okay. Let's talk about it scientifically. That's the reason though kung bakit may pubic hair ang mga lalaki. Because the pubic hair serves as a nest to the bird and the eggs. <laughs> Symbolic, okay? But ang tanong is, eh kung yun ang purpose ng pubic hair, bakit ang babae may pubic hair? Eh wala naman silang bird. Kasi nagaantay sila sa dadapong bird. <laughs> okay. Of course, that's just a joke. Let's move on, colleagues. Okay. Shigellosis is also a, uh, uh, a form of condition characterized by diarrhea and abdominal cramps. And your salmonella is also a diarrheal illness characterized by fever, abdominal cramps, and of course, the presence of pain. Okay, so let's move on. Knowing that now, knowing how you characterize each of those conditions in which you need to implement your standard precautions, let me draw your attention once again. If you go through our channel, I have a discussion of each of those this, uh, conditions, which I have recently just described. More in-depth discussion, you can find that on my YouTube channel. I have a discussion with 
for example, botulism with sample SATA question in rational. So I'm the one explaining it too. But you have you can also find videos there uh, done by other GAPOS mentors. Even IELTS videos are uploaded. Okay, so here we go. We go back to the question once again. Which of the following conditions require the implementation of standard precautions only? Select all that apply. Remember, brats. Okay, so let's analyze. One, diarrhea that develop after intake of medium rare meat. This could be associated with toxoplasmosis. Is it one of those we mentioned in brats? Yes, so implement standard precautions. Mouth foaming and seizures after a raccoon bite. This describes rabies. Is it one of those we mentioned with our acronym BRATS? Yes, so we put a check. Drooping of the eyelids after intake of honey. Yes, this is botulism. It's actually the first letter in our acronym BRATS where you need to implement standard precautions, so we put a check. Fever, rashes, and complex spots. This describes missiles. And when we talk of missiles, remember MTVS, missiles, tuberculosis, as well as varicella and SARS, you'll need to implement airborne precautions and not standard precautions. And your question is just asking you standard precautions. So we put an X. And then late afternoon, low grade fever, weight loss, and blood sputum. Once again, this describes tuberculosis in which you'll need to implement airborne precautions. So we put an X. That's a way to do it using my method, the Ray Gapus system, using your functional concepts method. So what is a good reference for infection control? So infection control forms part approximately okay, six to 12% of the exam. So it's very important you have a good reference. So when you watch our videos, I have two videos that dealt with isolation precautions, and it is very specific as pointers for the NCLEX RN. So I am the one discussing that. So go ahead and access, and don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification buttons. So you'll get notified when we upload videos, usually two times or three times a week. Okay, so that's number 10 on our list of topics. Number nine, age-specific care. Sabi nila, ano kaya yung age-specific care? Kasi we're fond of just I, I studying pediatric nursing, bata lang, okay? Until teenage years, okay? But when you say age-specific care from neonatal period to the elderly stage, okay? So here we go. Let's try answering a simple question. The nurse is caring for the following clients. Which client should the nurse evaluate first? So it's asking for prioritizing. 43-year-old man who is mumbling words to himself. 68-year-old woman exhibiting fever and confusion. Six-week-old baby who is crying but with no tears. 25-year-old two-months pregnant woman seeking consult for vaginal bleeding. Ang unang reaction nila dito is, oh my God, anong titignan ko? Titignan ko ba yung edad? <laughs> oh my God, anong titignan ko? Titignan ko ba yung conditions, yung sakit? Okay? So hindi ko po alam kung anong titignan ko. Mag-click na lang ako kahit na ano. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing wrong when you are just making an educated guess. What matters is, what matters is you know how to answer and how to defend your guess. And with that, let's use our functional concept. The very young, below one year old, and the very old, above 60, are most at risk to infection. So if you're going to go over Back to that question. This is just about which client is most at risk to infection. So take them age. Meron ba tayong above 60? Meron. Meron ba tayong below one year old? Meron. Okay. How do we break the tie? Two and three could be considered. Six week old baby is crying but with no tears. Tears are not formed until the baby is about eight weeks. So the absence of tears is not a sign that's abnormal. In fact, it's, it can be expected to a certain extent. So this means that the baby is healthy. But take a look at the 68-year-old woman exhibiting fever and confusion. Let me tell you about these guys. The most common symptom of infection in the elderly would be your altered level of consciousness. So whenever an elderly is confused, that's a sign that the client is having infection. Therefore, if you'll be asked on the test, what is the common initial manifestation of pneumonia in the elderly? Remember, pneumonia is a form of infection. Therefore, the correct answer to that question would be the initial manifestation of infection would be confusion, okay? So the answer would be number two. Excellent, okay? For the participant, Hazel, okay, who got the question correctly. Congratulations, Hazel. So let's move on. Okay, number three would be 
pharmacology and this is a problem. How do I study pharmacology? Let me tell you how. That's the reason why I'm here. Okay. So my quick fix number, session number 14, focus on prioritizing delegation pharmacology. Okay. From being your mentor, I'm now your fact check buddy in pharmacology. You can check that video on my YouTube channel, Gapus Mentor, so you can get Okay, as many pointers and tips as you need. So there are only five aspects of a drug that should be focused on when studying drugs. Namely, remember the code CHECK. That's why I'm saying I'm your fact check buddy. You first have to know the classification and subtype of the drug, how to evaluate the effects, exactly when is it best to administer it, client instructions and keys to giving it safely. Sorry. Now the most important thing that you have to know is that sometimes questions would talk about not just the main classification of the drug, but the other usage of the drug for other purposes other than from which they are initially classified to. What do I mean? Minsan, ang tanong sa NCLEX ay tungkol sa tricyclic antidepressant, like for example, amitriptyline. Okay? They will ask you, what is the purpose of giving an, a tricyclic antidepressant to a patient with cancer? Some students would quick to conclude that, okay, the antidepressant is given in a cancer client to manage the depression that comes with cancer. Could be, but that's not the primary reason. The antidepressants are usually used to decrease neuropathic pain in cancer patients. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is that wag masyadong nakakahon ang utak. Kailangan guided ka paano mag-isip. Passing the NCLEX is not difficult if you have the right mentor. Okay? So what is important, therefore, is if you would want to focus on a specific aspect of the drug begin with the classification, okay? So let's move on. So let's try answering a simple question. A client, should the, which client should the nurse attend to first? Is it a client receiving alprazolam and is secretly taking valerian for insomnia? Client receiving thoracins, being given levodopa for pseudoparkinsonism? Client taking lithium in combination with haloperidol? Or a client taking methylphenidate for hyperactivity? This is what they call eight in one question. Why? You have eight different concepts. You have here the drug, you have four different drugs and four different situations that accompanies the client's usage of the drug. So how do you deal with this? Always remember this functional concept. Do not combine sedatives with kava or valerian because kava and valerian are also herbal sedatives. You combine two sedatives together and what results? Respiratory depression. So this is your kava. It's used to induce muscle relaxation. This is how it looks. You have your picture to relieve pain, prevent seizures, calm anxiety in clients with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or to treat sleep disorders. However, it's contraindicated in depression, kidney disease, liver disease, alcoholism, and pulmonary hypertension or psoriasis. In the same manner, your valerian, this is how it looks, okay, the flowers are colored pink. It's used for sleep disorders. It's contraindicated in clients for clients who are taking medications for anxiety and depression, asthma and infection, cancer, erectile dysfunction like Viagra or GERD. So in essence, what we're saying is you do not combine Kava and Valerian when your patient's taking your sedatives, your drugs that decreases anxiety like Alprazolam. So if we go over to that question once again, so if you would want a full discussion of Kava and Valerian, I have that on my YouTube channel videos. If you are rushing, studying for your NCLEX, I have a video as well that summarizes all the pointers on herbal remedies, just 22 minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, so let's try going back and answer that question we posed a while back. So which client should the nurse attend to first? We go over. So number one, a client receiving Alprazolam secretly taking Valerian or insomnia. This client is combining the drug with herbal remedies. This is the answer. Although a client receiving thoracin is being given levodopa for Parkinsonism, yes, this is appropriate because levodopa is given to counter pseudo Parkinsonism. Okay, lithium in combination with Haldol, yes, this is appropriate because lithium is slow acting. It takes one to two weeks before therapeutic effects become evident. Therefore, your Haldol, okay, your Haldol, okay, is given to manage the acute symptoms of mania until lithium takes effect. And number four, a client taking methylphenidate for hyperactivity. Methylphenidate is a stimulant. Why are we giving it to a child with hyperactivity? Because, because the cause of the limited attention span 
that leads to hyperactivity is because the child is unable to focus. So if you may want to limit hyperactivity, you have to increase the child's ability to focus and you have to increase the child's attention span. And that could be done through a stimulant. And an example of stimulant would be your methyl phenidate. Oh, diba? oh, one of the side effects of methyl phenidate, colleagues taking the NCLEX, you may want to take this down. A client who is taking methyl phenidate would usually have either an insomnia or altered appetite. That's the reason why the common adverse effect will be growth suppression. Pansin niyo yung mga child actors na uminom niyan, like for example, ninyo mulak, medyo hindi masyadong lumaki. Remember, even Isa Siguera, di ba? Yung dating bata, ngayon binata na. <laughs> okay, sorry for that, totoo. Okay, so that could be the reason. Just a joke from Bossing Vic. Okay, let's move on. So from being your mentor, I'm now your fact check body in pharmacology. If you want a thorough discussion of that concept on pharmacology, please do check out my quick fix session 14. It all deals with pharmacology for the entrance RN. So number seven on our list, basic care and comfort. Okay, wag wag mong kakalimutan ang tracheostomy suctioning, colostomy suctioning, promoting sleep, promoting eating. Okay, all of these are still being asked. So Basic care and comfort. Let's try answering a simple question. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so when you're, when you're studying for your NCLEX, pay particular attention to basic concepts too. Like when teaching a client with a permanent colostomy, what might be expected on the discharge? The nurse should discuss the, so it focuses on discharge instruction. Is it going to be on the need for special Clothing, importance of limiting activity for number two. Number three, periodic dilatation of the stomach. Or number four, bland low residue diet regimen. Now, to answer that question, number three, you have to know your pointers on colostomy. The fecal matter that comes out depends on the location of the stomach. If the stomach is located in the ascending colon, you're going to have liquid feces, transverse colon, semi-solid feces, sigmoid colon would be solid feces. Now, fecal discharge occurs on the third post-operative day. So it's expected or it's normal if the patient's not passing out okay, fecal matter within three days after the creation of colostomy. In fact, some literatures agree that the formation of stools occurs on the seventh day after the surgical creation of a colostomy stomach. So stool starts to become formed around the seventh post-operative day. Then report difficulty in inserting the irrigating tube. This could mean there's now narrowing or scar formation within the stoma, okay, that could result to complications such as blockage. Then irrigate the colostomy when the client would have normally had a bowel movement to maintain their lifestyle or their daily routine. So in having this knowledge now, we could answer the question that we had a while back. So if you want a thorough knowledge on colostomy, I have a video just on colostomy and ileostomy, and I'm focusing on the pointers for the NCLEX and the other sets of nursing exams. It's newly uploaded. I also have a video on care of the client with ventilators. Please do check out on your YouTube channel. Now, number six on our list would be psychosocial integrity. Now, how is psychosocial integrity different from psychiatric nursing? Say psychiatric nursing, it deals primarily, okay, with the disorders identified in DSM-5 or the Diagnostic Statistical Manual 5, okay? When you say psychosocial integrity, it's more encompassing. It could be the application of mental health principles in clients with medical surgical condition. Kaya minsan akala nila yung topic MS, yung pala, yung palagang topic psych. Okay, so here we go. Here's an example. Who among the following clients is most at risk for abuse? Is it one, 65-year-old male widow who lives at home at a home care facility? Two, 65-year-old female currently unconscious in the ICU of a hospital? Three, 40-year-old female newly divorced? Or four, 70-year-old female who lives with a younger spouse? Mahirap sagutin to. Ano ba titignan ko? Yung gender ba? Yung age ba? Yung status ba? Yung situation ba? Yung condition ba? Yung sakit ba? So what do we need to look for? Use a functional concept. Elderly clients who live with their family are most at risk to abuse. In essence, the number one abuser of the elderly would be family members. It could either be the spouse or the children. Okay? So therefore, the basic question would be, sinong aabuso sa'yo kung mag-isa ka lang sa buhay, right? You may not be prone to abuse pag mag-isa ka lang sa buhay, but you could be prone to neglect. So if you talk about elderly neglect, so choose the person who lives alone. But if you talk about elderly abuse, choose the person who lives with a family member, okay? So let's go over 
this important thing. Statistics show that the main abuser of the elderly could either be the spouse or the family members. So knowing that functional concept now, very good for those who are participating. All of you guys are giving me the correct answers. Way to go for your NCLEX preparation. Okay. So who among the following clients is most at risk for abuse? Okay. So the first thing that you have to look for would be the elderly. So above 60. So that long above 60, with, we eliminate option three. The second thing that we need to look for would be the gender. Okay, so what did we say a while back? The elderly female is most prone to abuse, whereas the elderly male is more prone to suicide. Okay, so the answer would be 70 year old female who lives with a younger spouse, because we said a while back in our functional concept that the family members could be the most common abusers of the elderly. Okay, so the answer would be number Four. Okay, with that, that's actually the first part of our NPLEX RN uh, master class. But at this point in time, we're going to have a raffle of my books. Okay, this book, The ABC of Passing the NPLEX RN, is the first Filipino authored book that I've written for Mosby Elsevier. Okay, I have also a version of that for the nurse licensure exam, local board. And then NPLEX RN in a flash was tagged as customer's favorite in uh, Jones and, oh no, no, it's actually in Barnes and Nobles, okay? This is published by Jones and Bartlett. It was tagged as customer favorite in uh, Barnes and Nobles in the US, okay? And actually, Teresa George, I haven't even met her, sent me an email telling me I nearly gave up after failing the NCLEX nine times. In my 10th time, I read NCLEX RN in a flash. Now, NCLEX RN in a flash is the international title of my book. However, this is a little pricey at $80, but don't despair, colleagues. Okay, this is Teresa George sending me her picture. Okay, we're giving away NCLEX 311. NCLEX 311 is the Philippine version of NCLEX RN in a flash. I asked my publisher if I can um, manufacture it for my Filipino colleagues para hindi masyadong magasusan kasi the book is $90 in the States. So we're raffling off 20 Okay, learning tools, sets of learning tools. When I say sets of learning tools, kasama pati ang nursing reminder sheets na ang content niya puro mnemonics and reminders for those that you need to recall as you prepare for your NCLEX test. So before we proceed, I'm giving once again the floor to our host, Sir Miko, to facilitate our raffle. I'll see you for the second half of our NCLEX RN Masterclass to cover the five remaining sets of topics that I'd like you to focus on before you you take your test. So let's have the raffle for the winner, Sir Miko. Let's begin with our next set of the most commonly asked topics, okay? Topic number five, okay. You also need to study parenteral therapies. Okay. Minsan, min, nakakalimutan na natin to eh. What is important is, thank you. Pass my local board nursing exam with you. Salamat. Okay. Thank you for being here. Oh, yeah, hey. Masaya na silang lahat. Wala nang nadidepress. We'll, we'll give you all the PDF copy. Okay. Sabi ko nga, this God-given knowledge, eh, binigay lang to sa akin so I can be an instrument to help others. So, I'm giving that out to all of you guys. Okay, salamat din sa tiwala ninyo. Okay, now what do we need to focus on in terms of parenteral therapies? Now, minsan ito nakakalimutan natin. The best way is for, have to have, for us to have another sample question. Here we go. A 10-month-old infant who has short bowel syndrome is receiving long-term total parenteral nutrition. Now, the key in answering this question correctly is that you have to identify what's the main topic of the question. It's not about short bowel syndrome because it's just one of the indications for parenteral therapy. This is about total parenteral nutrition or TPN. Now, which of the following laboratory results would be most important for the nurse to assess? Is it amylase, BUN, aspartate aminotransferase, or hematocrit? First, you have to recall, amylase could be associated with your uh, pancreas, BUN with your kidneys, aspartate aminotransferase, your liver, hematocrit could be associated with your bone marrow function. Now, to, to further enhance your ability to answer this correctly, we go over some functional concepts. TPN is usually indicated in Crohn's disease and short bowel syndrome as an alternative method of providing nutrition, and it's prepared by the pharmacy. So it's the pharmacist who usually prepares it, but it's the RN who dispenses it. 
Okay, so TPN is administered through the subclavian or internal jugular vein. However, long-term uh, use of TPN could lead to the development of a complication and that's fatty liver. So what did we say a while back about the options that we have in the question? Your aspartate amino transferase is associated with the client's liver function. Therefore, if we're going to go over back to the question, all we have to do is to identify which of these laboratory data could be associated with the client's liver, and that's number three. So the answer would be aspartate amino transferase. Excellent. Okay, now, number four. Medical emergencies, nako po, okay. Um, minsan ang problem, yung mga na transfer and focus on their, their practice in, kunwari, maternal and child health nursing. Um, just a tip, colleagues. Less likely na i-employ yung MCN yung, yung experience. So if you are in MCN, you could probably transfer to other areas too para yung employability nyo mas tumaas. Just a tip. Okay, so siguro sa ER, okay, so that you'll at least become uh, knowledgeable and adept at dealing with medical emergencies. Okay, so here we go. Let's try answering a simple question. When ventricular fibrillation occurs in a coronary care unit, the first person reaching the client should, is it A, initiate cardiopulmonary resuscitation, B, defibrillate the client, C, administer sodium bicarbonate intravenously, or D, administer oxygen. Now we know for a fact that, listen to this very, very carefully, the first person should defibrillate the client, D-C-E-L, yan eh, diba? defibrillate, okay, and then CPR, then epinephrine, administer epinephrine and lidocaine. Remember, your ventricular fibrillation is considered the most dangerous arrhythmia. So whenever you are being given several clients and you're being asked which client should be your priority, you have to choose the client with ventricular fibrillation. However, on the test, sometimes they don't use the label ventricular fibrillation. What they have would be ECG strips. Ah, kaya pala, sir, importante. Is it important that I have to study ECG interpretation? Yes. Those of you who may want a simplified ECG interpretation that is specifically designed to master your basic um, arrhythmias that are usually asked on the test, I have a short and a long video as well on our YouTube channel. You can access it for free. So remember this functional concept. The primary cause of ventricular fibr fibrillation is hypoxia. Torsado point may progress to ventricular fibrillation. Now your torsado point is usually characterized by prolonged QT interval. And sometimes this prolonged QT interval could be associated with the food that we eat. Like for example, your um, grapefruit juice could cause prolongation of torsado point or even medications that the patient take. Like for example, your lithium carbonate could cause prolongation of the QT and eventually would develop into torsado point. Okay, now your torsado point may progress to ventricular fibrillation. So if you ask me if this is a medical emergency, yes, it is. Therefore, here's the tracing for torsado point. Okay, so it's very chaotic. Now, what causes torsado point? Okay, it could be drug induced, like your clarithromycin, rovofloxacin, haloperidol, floxetine, cimetidine. Okay, could cause it. Even your antiarrhythmic agents like quinidine could cause it. On dancitron, which is an anti-emetic agent given 30 minutes before chemotherapy, could cause torsado point. It could also be caused by inherited traits or it simply is idiopathic or the cause is unknown. And treatment with lithium could also lead to torsado point. Treatment with antiarrhythmics, specifically class three antiarrhythmics could lead to torsado point, okay? Then electrolyte imbalance like hypomagnesemia, hypokalemia, and hypocalcemia could lead to torsado point. And substances from foods like grapefruit. So you have the code pointes or points, okay? As risk factors for torsado point. Now, once again, this discussion is part of my simplified discussion for EKG interpretation for, N, uh, for nurses taking the NCLEX RN test. It's very, very specific for NCLEX. So if you may want to find out and study it, it's one of our most viewed videos in our channel. Okay, so defibrillation is the treatment of choice for ventricular fibrillation. Once ECG reflects ventricular fibrillation, treat the patient with a shock, okay? So defibrillation and then CPR, two minutes per five, 
for two minutes for five cycles, and then shock plus CPR plus ifinipin, and then shock plus CPR plus amniodarone. That's from the American Heart Association. So don't forget, I'd like to highlight this class, how much, okay, in terms of uh, joules is your electric how much of electric shock is usually delivered to the client in terms of joules? So for defibrillation, you have 200 joules for biphasic and 360 joules for monophasic, okay? So you begin with 200 joules. Don't forget, I'm highlighting it for biphasic defibrillation. So it is the treatment of choice for a patient with pulseless ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. Now, on my extended discussion of this concept, I differentiated what's the difference between defibrillation and cardioversion. You'll all find that in my video, okay? So here, so you would notice if you are rushing, you just would want to know the pointers on ECG. I have a less than 20 minute video on that. EKG pointers. If you may want to understand the entire process of EKG interpretation, I have a one hour, 38 minutes and 15 seconds video on that. You can access it through our YouTube channel, Capus Service. Okay, so let's move on to concept number three, diagnostic procedures. And people would say, what will I study for diagnostic procedures? Okay, so these are just so basic and I've forgotten most of this. The key is you always have to remember they are not going to ask you about the technical terms on the diagnostic test. They're not going to ask you about radionuclide contrast medium. They would want to laymanize how you're supposed to be explaining patient preparations in terms of diagnostic procedures. So dapat reality-based, layman's term ang gagamitin. Like how will you explain MRI to an adolescent using their own language? Mga ganun yung tanong, okay? So here's a sample question. Okay, which of the following statements reflect appropriate preparation of the client for multiple gated acquisition scan? Now, basically, if you know what MUGA is or multiple gated acquisition scan, then it's going to be easy for you to identify which is the correct answer. Your MUGA is a test for the ventricular function of the heart. Okay, so letter A, avoid douching on the day of the exam. This is not about the perineal area or the vaginal area. Okay, so we eliminate that. Tell me if you are allergic to shellfish. Well, there's a dye that's being used in your multiple gated acquisition scan, but it's a radionuclide dye and it's less likely to cause allergy. Okay, so you're left with C and D. Avoid using your deodorant on the day of the exam. Um, this is not about your... Muga. This is about your <laughs> ginagawa yan if you're preparing your patient for your mammography. Uh, so the x-ray diagnostic test for the breast because deodorants, even if you are using, listen to this class, those who are taking the NCLEX, herbal deodorants may potentially form substances and curds because they solidify if they get exposed to x-ray and may give a false positive result. So whether it's going to be herbal based or natural deodorant or not, the patient is supposed to not to use anything under their, their arms or their armpits as well as near the breast if they're undergoing mammography or x-ray of the breast, okay? So chances are the answer could be RD. You will have to sign a form. So remember, MUGA is used to evaluate the pumping function or ejection fraction of the ventricles. So what does this mean? So it gives us an idea whether the heart is adequately pumping blood. So this could be used as an evaluation test for those who are undergoing cardiac rehabilitation or for those who are undergoing cardiac treatments, okay? So the normal ejection fraction is 50 to 70% and MUGA requires no special preparations and food restrictions, okay? So if you go over the question again, the answer definitely is letter D. The patient would need to sign a form. Why is that so? Because they will need to be injected with a contrast medium and they have to agree to the procedures that will be done to them during the test, okay? So the best answer is letter D. Let's move on. Now, number two on our list, okay? 
delegation. Okay, a lot of people are so confused about the concept of delegation, maybe because you are reading very old literatures. Always remember, the principles of delegation keep on evolving. During our time, whenever a patient has intravenous fluids, we cannot delegate them to the unlicensed assisted personnel. And even injectable medications should not be delegated to the unlicensed assisted personnel. That's during our time, but times have changed. Now, injection of insulin, if a patient is in a home care facility, could already be delegated to the unlicensed assisted personnel because it's already considered routine. So what I'm trying to point out, colleagues, is you have to take note of the publication of the literature that you're reading because the protocols are changing every so often. So here's a simple question. Which of the following aspects of medication administration can the RN delegate to the unlicensed assisted personnel? Select all that apply. Administration of subcutaneous insulin to a home care resident? Yes, okay. Always remember the RN and the LPN may delegate the technical task of medication administration to the unlicensed assisted personnel, which simply means for the analytical side of the administration of medications, it should be the RN. What do I mean by that? Yung pagbibigay ng gamot, pwede mong iutos, pero yung pag-analyze kung nagka-side effect siya, nagka-adverse effect siya, kung meron ba siyang untoward reaction, sa RN yon. Okay? Now, what's the difference between self-administration and UAP administration of the drug? Ganito lang yon. Kung binigay ng unlicensed assisted personnel yung gamot, siya yung nagpasok sa bibig ng pasyente, then it's the unlicensed assisted personnel who administer the drug. Pero pag inabot lang ng UAP yung gamot sa pasyente at yung pasyente ang nagpasok sa bibig niya ng gamot, then that's considered self-medication. Okay? So medication administration via gastrostomy tube. Let me clarify this class. Okay? Medication administration in various cavities in the body, like intrathecal, intraosseous, intraventricular, okay? It's a job of the RN, but there's an exception to every rule. So may pwedeng gawin ang unlicensed assisted personnel, and that is to administer medication via gastrostomy tube or nasogastric tube. However, if the medication, kung ang gamot ay enteric-coated, ang enteric-coated medicine, i-designed yan para sa ma-absorb sa large intestines. So hindi dapat kinakrush, hindi dapat chinuchu, at definitely hindi dapat hinahalo sa gastrostomy feeding. So ano dapat ang gawin? So kung meron siya enteric-coated medication pero naka-gastrostomy tube siya, you have to call the pharmacy and request for a change in form. Okay? Application of ointments. Naalala ko tuloy, anong tawag sa gamot pag sa baboy na kamukailangang ipahid? <laughs> In the ointment, ointment, <laughs> okay. Of course, the unlicensed the person can do that. Evaluation of therapeutic response. Once again, this is part of the nursing process. The RN should do this. And identification of side effects. That needs evaluation of the patient. So that's the task of the RN. So let's go over our functional concepts. So the RN and the LPN may delegate the technical task of medication administration to the unlicensed assisted personnel. The following may not be delegated to the unlicensed assisted personnel. Okay, recognizing side effects sa RN to, hindi sa UAP. Toxic effects sa RN, allergic reactions yan. Nagkakaroon lang naman ng allergy yung pasyente pagka siya ay social, di ba? Kasi pag hindi social, ang tawag dyan, galis. <laughs> okay, yung pangalan at tawag sa sakit ay depende. Okay, sa estado sa buhay. Remember, pagbalik ko ang likod mo, okay, at mahirap ka, tawag sa'yo kuba. Um, pero pag mayaman ka, mas social, scoliotic. O, di ba? <laughs> if you are having hallucinations, you're hearing voices at medyo mahirap ka, tawag sa'yo, baliw. <laughs> pero pag mayaman ka, tawag sa'yo, may nervous breakdown. O, oh, mas social lang konti. Okay. So, identification of unusual and unexpected effects, changes in client's condition that contraindicate administration for the drug, or in other words, making judgment is the job of the R. And okay, now take note class, delegation of medication administration to appropriately educated and competent. This is a key phrase, educated and competent and licensed personnel, which means they had the training and they are certified to do it, includes the following routes, pills or oral, powder and paste, 
oral, ophthalmic, and otic. Pay particular attention on how do you administer the otic drops. If you are giving it to a child below three years old, pull the peanut down and back. For three years old and above, pull it up and back. Inhalant, take note that the inhalant, if it's usually given to a patient with asthma, assess if there is a spacer. Because sometimes fungus, which could be the description that they usually use on the test, whitish sediments, okay, on the inhaler could form, okay? So it's better that the patient would use your spacer. The nasal drops and sprays, use one nostril at a time when you're uh, administering drops through the nose, like for example, this mopresin acetate, topical or transdermal. Now I have a video that discusses how do you administer your fentanyl transdermal patch. You make sure you don't, your hands or your skin don't come in contact with it because it's easily absorbed in the skin. So it's proper to use gloves. Please do check on my videos because it's one of the trending concepts, NCLEX issues. Sublingual, buccal, and vaginal suppositories. That should be administered properly, okay? So let's move on. Intradermal, subcutaneous, and IM may be delegated to the unlicensed assistant personnel only with careful considerations of applicable laws. IV, intraosseous, epidural, caudal, intrathecal, intraolar, cranial, intraventricular administration of medications are not permitted for delegation to the unlicensed assistant personnel. It's practically the job of the RN. So if you're going to go back to the question and we answer it, definitely one, two, and three could be delegated, four, and five would be the job of the RN. And therefore, these tasks can never be delegated, okay? So if you want more of the discussion of delegation versus assignment, I have a 20-minute video of that on our GAPUS Mentors channel. Please do check out. You're going to get your NCLEX review for free through my YouTube channel. And last but not least, in our top 10 list of concepts, establishing priorities. Here we go. Here's a functional concept. Priorities for maternal and child nursing cases include uh, cash API, so cardiac compromise, acute mental status change, severe respiratory distress seizures, signs of abruptio placenta, signs of uterine rupture, hemorrhage, abnormal vital signs, prolapse cord, and imminent birth. I'd like to highlight one important thing. Why is placenta previa not found here? The signs and symptoms of placenta previa are considered level two priorities. In some literatures, it's even level three priorities. So between a patient with abruptio placenta and a patient with placenta previa, your priority should be the patient with abruptio placenta because it's a level one priority. Okay, so here we go. So which of the following patients should the nurse attend to first? 32-year-old primary gravida with BP of 110 over 70, heart rate of 105. Um, these are normal indicators, so nothing significant to consider. 33-year-old multigravida with painless vaginal bleeding. This is most likely associated with your um, placenta previa, which is a level two priority. Number three, a 35-year-old multigravida with fetal parts showing in the perineum. This indicates imminent delivery. Or number four, 31-year-old primary gravida who is sleepy but can follow verbal commands. So this could be expected in a pregnant client. Look, a patient with imminent birth, okay, belongs to your level one priority. So therefore, chances are the best answer would be number three. That's how you use functional concepts. You need practice to do that, okay? So... At this point in time, that's how nurses worldwide have discovered the Ray Gapos name, name synonymous to service and to excellence. And I'm just so proud to be at your service today. And thank you very much, Health Carousel, for giving me this opportunity, the platform to reach out to our colleagues and serve them in the way that I know I can do best. So join our fellow nurses worldwide. Okay, that's me with some of my foreign students. And I have another quick fix session on March 6th, gonna be quick fix session number 17. Once again, I'm your mentor, Mentor Ray, also your fact buddy, fact check buddy in pharmacology, okay? And to share with you a message na pampa good vibes coming from one of my international students, Mary Ramos, okay? She got her license from the State Board of California and she says, I made it, salamat sobra sa inyo. Lahat ng dinidiscuss nila Ma'am Jem, Ma'am Kai and Sir Ray sa quick fix sessions lumabas. Thank you so much. For our um, foreign participants, I made it. Thank you so much to all of you. Everything that were discussed by Mam Jem, Mam Kain Suri in this quick fix sessions helped. Thank you so much. And that's a way to end 
our teaching and learning session. I'm just so happy to be serving you today what God-given knowledge was given to me. And that's for the service of my colleagues. So thank you. This is your mentor and your fact check buddy, Ray Gapos, saying maraming maraming salamat sa pagkakataon mapaglingkuran ko po kayo. Salamat po. Ayan. Salamat or maraming maraming salamat, Sir or Dr. Ray, for of course gracing us with your presence and of course your, the invaluable insights that you provided to us. Um, question and answer chat box. So some of the questions have already been answered by Sir Ray. Uh, Sir Ray, are you still there? Yes, I'm here, Spirit of the Glass. <laughs> okay. Ayun. Sir, 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 sir um, saan makakahingi ng PDF file? Uh, we'll send it through uh, Health Carousel, yung PDF file, para sila na magbigay sa lahat sa inyo. Ayun. So, ayun. So, actually, Sir, Ray, uh, answered one of our questions here. How many percent should you get in order to pass the NCLEX? Or how many correct answers do I need? Po, to pass. So now remember, remember the NCLEX is uh, based on the pass or fail decision on the NCLEX is not based on the number of items you answered. So it's based on how you are able to navigate through the different levels of questions based on Bloom's taxonomy. So parang ganito yan, explain natin. Binigyan ka ng madaling tanong, nasagot mo ng tama, aakyat siya sa mahirap. So pag nasagot muli ng tama, aakyat sa mas mahirap. So pag ang level ng mga natatanong na, na masasagot mong tanong ay doon sa mas mahirap at pinakamahirap, you get to pass the test. Pero kung ang level ng mga katanungan na sasagot mo, like binigyan ka ng madali na sagot mo, umakyat siya sa mahirap, hindi mo siya nasagot. So babalik uli siya sa madali. So nasagot mo uli ng tama, akyat siya sa mahirap, di mo uli nasagot, babalik siya uli sa madali. So in essence, pag puro madadali yung nasagot mo ng tama, bagsak pa rin. Okay? So yung tiyatawag doon na computer adaptive testing. Tinitignan nila yung level ng competence mo. Kaya chances are yung mga sinasabi nila na ang dali ng NCLEX, ba't ako bumagsak? Kasi kaya ka nadalian dahil hindi umakyat yung level ng difficulty ng questions sa sasagutan mo. Dahil every time na umaakyat sa mahirap, namamali ka. Okay? And there are those na nahirapan ng sobra sa exam and yet pumasa. Bakit? Kasi umakyat yung kanilang katanungan sa mas mahirap na tanong at nasustain nila yung pagbibigay ng tamang sagot. So that's how the NCLEX works. So it's not based on the number of correct items or correct answers that you give. It is based on the type of questions that you were able to answer correctly given the number of items that you had. Ayun siya. Thank you very much, Suri, for answering that question. We have several questions in the question and answer chat box. This is a very specific concern to Sarah Marie Palmes. She has the three first names, Sarah Marie Margaret. And then, what is the name of the Pearson View registration is Sarah Marie Mar. Because that's just the cash. I believe this is like in the exam, there are boxes. Magkakaproblema daw po ba siya, Sir Ray? Since hindi hindi. Na hindi. Na oh, huwag ka na mag-worry kasi ako din dyan may junior. <laughs> hindi rin na nag e ako, hindi rin siya nagre-reflex sa aking ATT. Kasi hindi na rin siya kasa. Pa pero sa master list nila nandoon. So, you don't have to worry. Oo, oh, minsan talaga nakakat. And then sabi ng isa dito si Patricia, tips po sana for SATA questions. SATA questions. Yung, yung aking free a quick fix session on March 6 is SATA galore ang title. So, puro SATA yon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between the NCLEX of different yes. states than that mm -hmm. of California? Yes. I can honestly say yes. I've taken the NCLEX in different states. And California is a multi-state um, uh, gives, they give out multi-state license. So, medyo mas mahirap yung kanilang uh, level sa California. Paano po mag-apply for NCLEX exam? Send me uh, your email okay so i can assist you okay Re refer kita sa pwede mag assist sa yo then sir meron po tayong ano question dito what is the best advice for the first time taker ito most likely marami ditong first takers mm -hmm. the, so what would be your best advice po the best advice is you have to have a sense of direction so you have to have a mentor that should give you that 
Okay? Kaya nga meron akong YouTube channel where our colleagues can reach out to me kasi ginagawan ko sila ng programa na makakatulong based dun sa characteristics nila kung sila ba ay Gen Z or Gen, Gen X ba sila, millennial ba yan, or sila ba ay fresh grad. Kasi kung more than five years kang graduate, iba yung program na ibibigay ko sa'yo. Iba rin yung ibibigay ko ng program sa'yo kung fresh grad ka. Diba? Ngayon, kung may asawa ka na and you're living with your family, pag-usapan natin ano-ano yung dapat mong eliminate when you're preparing for the NTLEX. But I'm not saying eliminate mo yung asawa mo. <laughs> <laughs> ang, ang point ko lang, i-customize ko yung advice ko based doon sa mga produkto ng research na nagsasabi na ito ay mga positive at negative indicators when you are preparing for the NTLEX para matulungan kita ng maayos. Mm-hmm. Ito po sir, from Honey Lee Cesar. Sir Ray, paano mag-apple for NCLEX exam? Ah, yung mag-apply. Uh, sinen- apply, po, sorry. Sinen- apply. Yun, apply. Sabi ko sa kanya, ang unang gawin mo, mag-decide ka kung anong state board. May, meron kasing consideration yan eh. Kaya ka ba doon mag-apply dahil mas mura? Kaya ka ba doon mag-apply o mas mabilis? O kaya ka doon mag-apply dahil doon mo gustong pumunta? So we have to explore. Pero ang ang first step mo, decisionan mo muna saan mo gustong pumunta para doon yung application natin. And then from there, pwede kitang i-refer sa mag-a-assist sa'yo. So I, I think I sent my email. Yes. Um, from Ragna Faye Bartiana, uh, where can we buy your book, Sir Ray? Uh, my books, kung gusto mo international edition, nasa Amazon siya pero pricey nga kasi. <laughs> Kaya nga dito nagbigay ako ng Philippine edition para makatulong ako sa ating mga kababayan na hindi ganun kamahal. Okay? But if you want, you can actually send uh, an email to us and then uh, para um, masabihan ka namin kung saan siya available, nang hindi pirated yung nabibili mo. Uh-huh. Ayun. Sir, sa SATA, uh, ba if you didn't get all correct answers, makakuha pa ka pa rin ba ng points sa nasagot mong tama or mali isa, mali lahat? Uh, all or none yan. Oo. All or none. Okay. Sir, may available slot na po ba for NCLEX? Nako, at ito mga question ah, na to. Yeah, nako. Uh, namumove nang namumove. Pero pag nababantayan naman, nagkakaroon ng available na slot sa NCLEX. So I suppose they're gonna normalize in the next few months. But as of now, some of our students who should have taken the test as early as August last year are still dead in March. So you can just imagine yung kanilang delay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ito sir, uh, Luis uh, Claire, Claire Dino, paano po kaya kung may enye yung last name ko, magkaka-problem po ba doon sir? Ako rin kasi sir, may enye. Uh-huh. So, yung enye nga na yan, lagi din namin na i-encounter yan. For as long as na-inform mo naman sila, pwede mo silang padalan ng email na may enye yung name mo. Pero yung system kasi nila walang enye. Okay? <laughs> so for as long as, ang ginagawa namin dyan, nagsisend ng email na may enye yung name. Oo, para... Uh, eventually uh, kla- klaro sa kanila na iyon yung nangyayari. Mm-hmm. Right. Really, it's not really a cause for alarm. It's just a matter of uh, saying it in in a for- formal way na nag-email ka that your name has an enye. And the ones they give to you, usually wala. Alam naman nila yun eh. Wala sa character nung kanilang system yung enye. Is case mm-hmm. study counted, sir? Okay, as of now, study, yung, case yeah. study, yung case study ay hindi pa. Yun yung tinatawag nating research section. Okay? So yung case study ay i-implement pa lang nila okay, in the future. Ang tawag nila doon, next generation NCLEX. Ngayon, kailan kaya yung future na yun? One good thing about NCLEX is they make announcements. Okay? I remember noong nagkaroon ng... Uh, epidemic ng influenza AH1N1, nagbigay pa sila ng advisory na hindi sila magtatanong ng A- influenza AH1N1 until 3 to 6 months thereafter. So, ganun sila ka-specific. So, one thing you can count on them, hindi sila maglalagay doon ng ikagugulat mo. So, iyan ay optional. Yang, yang pag-sta- pag-sagot ng case study as of now, optional, voluntary. Okay? So, kung, kung ikaw, sa tingin mo, kakabahan ka lang, huwag mo na lang sagutan. <laughs> <laughs> kasi hindi naman sa score okay yeah um meron tayong mga questions dito na similar dun sa sata yung question kanina all or nothing talaga siya and uh yung mga items na pwedeng yun nga yung kailangan dalhin going to the examination that would be yung passport and yung mask so i'm helping you out na para at least diba we have similar questions or questions kasi sa ating uh Q&A chat box pero ito sir meron po nagtatanong dito regarding naman sa review and preparation kasi 
I just returned from an anonymous attendee. I just returned back practicing to my nursing profession, but I plan to take NCLEX by early next year. Is it okay po ba mag-enroll mag na for review at this moment? Pero I'm watching your quick fix na po. Siguro sir, pwede mo rin po sabihin dito or sagutin kung when is the best time then to review. Okay, our program kasi, Sir Miko, is very customized, no? Very centered sa student yung program namin. So, yung programa namin, hindi one time. Okay? So, kung katulad ng ating anonymous uh, uh, participant, kung gusto mong mag-enroll na ngayon para ma-refresh ka, pwede. Ngayon, ang worry niya siguro is magbabayad ba uli ako pag next year pa yung exam ko? Hindi. Okay? So, based dun sa assessment namin sa sa'yo, Uh, you can sit in for free doon sa klase mo once na nag-in nag ka na. So, honestly, meron nga akong foreigner na minentor. Diyos ko, sampung buwan. <laughs> From the time nag-enroll siya sa program bago namin siya napakawalan. Pero pumasa naman siya. Okay? Uh, pwede po ba ma-access yung previous session of Quick Fix? Yes! Lady Princess, yung previous yes. uh, Quick Fix ko nandun lahat sa YouTube channel. Ma-access mo lahat yon. You can you can create yung yung study uh, 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 proceedings mo. You begin with Quick Fix 1. Nasa Quick Fix 16 na ngayon. And next week, I'll do Quick Fix 17, 18, and 19. Uh -oh. All right. Sir, we have another question from an anonymous attendee. Uh, sir, if compact state like Texas with jurisprudence exam, Any tips and advice? And mahirap po ba if compact state compared to single state ititake? Mas, mas maganda kasi yung single state. Although yung compact state kasi, kailangan mo pang mag-focus doon sa existing laws nila doon, doon sa jurisprudence nila, which changes very, very frequently. Ngayon, at this point, kung wala ka namang hinahabol na specific na lugar doon sa, doon sa pupuntahan mo or pwede kang mag-take kahit saan, eh doon tayo sa, di ba, ang goal natin, pumasa, di ba, at makuha yung license. Doon tayo sa kung saan natin mas madaling makuha yung ating goal. Alright, sige. So, um, I know that everyone has uh, a lot of questions pa, but since, of course, uh, we can only answer a few questions within a span of time, no worries because you can definitely reach out uh, to Dr. Ray and uh, his team if you have uh, certain questions regarding the NCLEX. Um, we appreciate and uh, we are grateful that you have a lot of questions. But as time permits, diba, we can only answer uh, only a few questions uh, from your question and answer. So we picked out yung mga very important questions that everyone could really relate to. But no worries. Like what I mentioned, Dr. Ray and of course his team will be very much open and willing to help you out individually regarding your concerns and your questions all right so with that um we would like to uh wrap up our event by of course presenting yung ating uh, certification of appreciation uh to dr ray kapos for of course uh being our resource speaker uh for this uh event okay so this certificate of appreciation is proudly presented to dr ray a gapos in grateful acknowledgement of his invaluable insights values and expertise as a lecturer during the nclex masterclass given this 27th day of february in the year of our lord 2021 of course signed by president of health cares of philippines Mr. Narcesio Ong. So thank you, thank you very much, uh, Sir or Dr. Ray, for being or for gracing us with your presence and your insights during this event. So hoping to see you in our future events as well. And of course, to everyone else uh, here, don't worry because you will also be receiving a certificate of participation that you were able to attend this event.